Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is as follows. A farmer has four and two thirds acres of land for growing corn and two and one half times as many acres for growing wheat. So the question is, how many acres are for the wheat? Okay, so this is the question and try to figure this out without using a calculator. Now, if you do need a calculator, well, go ahead and use one, but try to do this problem again without the aid of a calculator. And if you have the right answer, put that into the uh, comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem without the aid of a calculator. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer, let's take one more look at this question. So a farmer has four and two thirds acres of land for growing corn and two and one half times as many acres for growing wheat. So the question is, how many acres are for the wheat? All right, so hopefully you were able to figure this out without a calculator. And if you have the right answer, it will look like this, 11 and two thirds acres. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, we have to give you a nice little heavy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in solving basic math word problems that involve fractions. Now, if you tell your friends and family that, they may not be that impressed with that information. They'll be like, you know what, that's kind of boring. Leave me alone. I'm going to go back to my Netflix. But uh, all jokes aside, that's very good. Now, the one thing about this problem is that we don't need any algebra or anything like this. And so, you know, every time you read a math word problem or if you encounter something, just don't assume, a, 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 you know, that you might have to use algebra or you can't figure this thing out with uh, basic math or just, uh, you know, fractions. So you never know uh, how to solve a problem. In other words, you can't make any kind of predetermined uh, judgments about a problem until you read it, think about it, and then, of course, put your math skills to work to solve it. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. So first things first, first we have a lovely word problem. Now, I've already read the problem uh, two times, but I always like to suggest the rule of three. Read a problem at a minimum three times before you start to do anything. That gives your brain a chance to kind of kick in, and you can kind of really think about you know, the strategy and, of uh, course, you know what the, uh, the question is. Now here, uh, we are talking about a farmer he has uh, some land, right? He has acres of land. And in just in case you don't know what an acre is, it's just a measurement of land. Matter of fact, I wish I uh, knew. I'm sure a lot of you out there uh, know the answer to what an acre is. But, you know, it's a pretty good size piece of land. Uh, and, again, it's just a way to measure um, the area of, a, of uh, a land. Okay, so anyways, I think most people know what an acre is. But anyways, this farmer has four and two-thirds acres of land for growing corn. So he's got some land for growing corn and two and one half times as many acres for growing wheat. So the question is, how many acres are for the wheat? Now, when you read a prom and if, it's, and if you think about it and you're like, boy, this doesn't seem complex. Matter of fact, to answer the question, it seems like I only have to do one thing. Well, sometimes that indeed is the case and it will be the case in this particular prom. And now let's go ahead and take a look at how to think about this prom for those of you that are confused. So if you're confused about uh, what to do here, the best way to kind of um, look at a problem is to try to visualize it, right? So let's go ahead and just model this problem this way. Now you don't have to do this in this particular case, but it's always a good idea to model the problem because if you can see the problem, then oftentimes you can see the solution easier. But this farmer has four and two thirds acre acres to grow this corn, right? So it's over here. But we know that he has two and one half times the amount of acres to grow uh, wheat. So what does that mean? Well, times, what do you think times mean? When you hear times, three times 
of four, right? What does that mean? Three times four. Well, it means three uh, being multiplied by four, right? We're talking about multiplication. So really, can this problem be that simple? Is that to figure out how much uh, acres of wheat this farmer has, all we have to do is literally multiply uh, two and one half by this four and two thirds. Well, indeed, that's all we have to do. Now, as I indicated, uh, you do need to uh, know a thing or two about fractions if this was a problem on an exam where you couldn't use a calculator. So, but if you did use a calculator, all you had to do is take four and two thirds and multiply it by two and one half. But let's go ahead and uh, actually calculate out this answer using old school arithmetic. Okay, so again, uh, just paper and pencil. And now we have a lovely fraction problem. Okay, so four and two thirds uh, times two and one half. How do we do this problem? Well, what we have right here is what we call mixed number fractions. All right, so uh, let me go ahead and just do a fast review. So when you have a fraction like one half, uh, well, yeah, four thirds, and then we have these type of fractions, uh, fractions where the denominator, which is that bottom number, is bigger than the top number, which is called the numerator, this is called a proper fraction. Now, when the, uh, the numerator, excuse me, that top number is bigger than the, the denominator, this is called an improper fraction. So improper fraction, improper fraction, and then when you have things like this, uh, we have what we call mixed number fractions. Now, the thing about mixed number fractions is typically we don't want to work with um, fractions that are, are mixed number form. So we can convert these fractions into improper fractions. This is something that you definitely need to know how to do. So let's go and do that right now. Okay, so four and two thirds as an improper fraction. How do we do this? Well, we're gonna take three and we're gonna multiply by four. So three times four is 12. And then we're gonna add this uh, numerator. So 12 plus two is 14. And we're gonna put it over this denominator. So hopefully you remember how to change a mixed number fraction into an improper fraction and vice versa. So 14 thirds uh, into a mixed number fraction. We'll take a look at uh, how to do that at the end of this problem. But let's go ahead and change this mixed number fraction two and one half. So this is gonna be two times two, which of course is four plus one is five. So we have five halves. Okay, so this is a much easier way to look at this multiplication of these two fractions. So four and two thirds times two and one half is equivalent to 14 thirds times five halves. Okay, so how do we multiply fractions? Well, this is super easy. All we have to do is literally multiply the respective numerators and denominators. Okay, so this is gonna be 14 times five over three times two. And of course, we're gonna be doing some old school multiplication here, so 14 times five. So five times uh, four is 20. So we have a zero here, put a two there. Five times one is five plus two is seven. So there is our 70, and then three times two is six. So here is our answer, 70 over six. Now, if you have this uh, answer, uh, that's not bad. And of course, you could reduce that down. But uh, at this stage, you know, no one's going to say, hey, uh, how many acres of, uh, of wheat do you have? Oh, we have 70 over 6 um, acres, right? So we want to go ahead and kind of clean this up. And what we have here is an improper fraction. So what we're going to do is uh, write this as a mixed number fraction. So how do we do that? Okay. Well, we have to take this and divide it by this using uh, basic arithmetic, basic division. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Well, I definitely need your help. I'm not afraid to ask for it. And if you are struggling in math, if you're like, yeah, I don't really like math too much, you know, uh, well, listen, don't be afraid to ask for help. Okay. We all need help in certain things in our life. Uh, but here's the thing. If you are looking for math help, you got to be very careful where you find it because there's a lot of quick little tutorials and little uh, tutorials are fine for quick review. And that's typically uh, a good way to review something you already know. But if you're trying to learn something the first time, uh, a lot of times students are like, you know, I only have five minutes. You know, math is not that important to me. I only got a little bit of time to try to learn all this algebra and math. Well, that's not the way it works. Okay. If you truly want to learn math, you need full comprehensive instruction. And then you got to practice, practice, practice. So I'm just kind of telling you uh, the reality of the situation. So don't dis uh, if you're discouraged in math, don't remain discouraged. Find the help that you need. So I'm going to tell you that if you like my YouTube videos, well, then you would love my full course instruction. Uh, all those courses you can find 
the links to them in the description of this video, but get full instruction, get the help that you need. Anyways, hopefully you'll hit that subscribe button so I can stop talking and finish this problem up. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so thanks for giving me a little bit of time, by the way, uh, to kind of explain to you why, you know, you know, basically why I do what I do. Now we can finish this problem up. Well, effectively though, at this point, we do have the right answer. But what we're gonna do here is clean this up so it just makes sense to most people, right? You wouldn't say, hey, how many acres do you have of wheat? Oh, I got 70 over six acres. Well, no, let's go ahead and clean this up. So we got this improper fraction. Let's turn this into a mixed number fraction. So we're gonna do some old school division here and hopefully you remember how to do this, right? So this is gonna be 70 divided by six. And now let's go ahead and run through something called the division algorithm. You don't even know that that's what this is called. But uh, what's interesting here, I'll run through this real basic division problem here. This is, again, called the division algorithm. Now, an algorithm is like a computer program. Uh, and now division is obviously the math operation that we're doing here. But the steps that you're doing in arithmetic, just like this, these, uh, these same steps carry over to algebra. Matter of fact, uh, in a lot of advanced algebra, you're doing the same steps, but you're using variables. So the whole point to, uh, in that little comment is that arithmetic, basic math is important. And if you don't know it, you're gonna have a tough time in algebra. So let's go ahead and do this uh, little division. So we're gonna say, okay, six goes into 70, so six can go into seven one time. So one times six is six. And now we're gonna write that there. Then we're gonna subtract, right? So seven uh, minus six is one. Okay, or six, uh, we'll take away uh, seven. Uh, so, or seven minus six, excuse me. <laughs> so seven minus six is one. So we're like, okay, can six go into one? No, so we gotta drop the zero. So six can go into 10. Uh, yes, uh, one time. So one times six is six. And so 10 minus six is four. Now, I'm really doing a disservice to, you know, uh, trying to learn division. Now, if you need uh, help with basic division and whatnot, check out my Math Foundations course. It is a full arithmetic review. Uh, you can find a link to that in the description of this video. But here we have a remainder of four. Now, six can't go into four. We don't have any more numbers to drop down. So the answer here is 11, okay, remainder four. But we can express this remainder as a fraction over six. So this is 11 over four over six, and four over six, we can reduce that fraction to two thirds. So the answer is 11 and two thirds acres. Okay, so hopefully this wasn't that difficult of a problem to solve. And you know, not all math problems are going to be difficult. Sometimes uh, a lot of students or a lot of people are like, you know, I'm waiting for you know, all this like algebra I have to use, or they overcomplicate the answer. Now, uh, oftentimes, again, a lot of problems are gonna be very easy for you to solve. You're gonna see the solution right away, but uh, really to have confidence that you are doing the problem right, even if it's easy, you gotta read the problem a few times, and you know, because you wanna just double check, hey, is this thing, you know, as easy as I think I, it is? And if it is, when you know what you're doing, because you've been watching a lot of my videos, then, you know, solve the problem, okay? But you can only have confidence in your solution if you read the problem more than a few times. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.